So, um, once again, excuse the haircut, but um, you know, during this time, it's COVID-19, I want to make sure that we all, like, you know, stay safe. Uh, you get a haircut once a week, but, you know, that ain't happening. Uh, but, hey, it's for a greater cause. So, um, today I want to talk about recreating yourself. Um, I'm re currently reading this book, 48 Laws of Power, as by Robert Greene fairly older book, uh, basically it takes a lot of uh, historians, uh, people, notable people in the past, and kind of intertwine their stories, kind of come up with 48 Laws of Power. And um, the chapter I just read this morning was uh, Recreate Yourself. And this is just a short passage that I'm gonna read. Uh, Do not accept the roles that society fought, fought on you. Recreate yourself by forging a new identity, one that commands attention and never bores the audience. Be the master of your own image rather than let others define it for you. And so one of the reasons why I wanted to uh, talk about that is because with this COVID-19, a lot of people are going to have to recreate themselves uh, in order to be successful, in order to make money, in order to provide for your family, teach your family. Uh, you got to become very creative in uh, being a mom and dad, uh, being a teacher, being a provider, financing, learn how to cook better for those who, who eat out a lot, um, uh, learn how to order cheap. Uh, I've seen a lot of new ads on social media with uh, meal prep uh, companies, you know, coming up, which, you know, that's the name of the game. You know, that's, uh, that's how economics work. You know, you find a need to fulfill it. So just for me, uh, three, I guess, uh, perspectives that I would give on recreating yourself. One is know thyself, okay? Know what you want to be. Um, when I say you recreate yourself, I'm not talking about, you know, being something that you're not, okay? That's not what I'm saying. Uh, I know you've heard people say that, I've said it before, fake it till you make it, and that's not necessarily the truth. Uh, I like the uh, famous coach Nick Saban says, act like you've been there, right? Uh, that's my thing, but I, I think there's a difference between faking till you make it and act like you've been there because you know you, when you win something you achieve something you, you, you want to come off as if like hey I prepared for this and, and like I'm ready for this uh, whether it's a new promotion whether it's a new startup whether you're selling a company you try to figure out the next phase in your life so that's my first thing you just know what you know know what ticks you, you know what what drives you what gets you up in the morning and what you want to be known for you, know, you always hear people say um, you know you got two or three appointed moments in your life. When you're born, when you die, and they dash in the middle, you know? And that dash signifies the dash in your, on your tombstone. The second thing I would say that uh, perspective that I would give in uh, recreating yourself is, hey, know your limits. Uh, be sober. And when I say that, I'm not talking about in the general sense of uh, not drinking and not, you know, you know, smoking cigars or, you know, more forbid drugs. I definitely don't condone drugs. I don't know it myself. So, uh, but uh, know your limits uh, because when you start acting in your true power and when you start tapping into who you really are, success is going to come naturally. I mean, it's going to be something that is almost sick in nature. And as you become more successful, you gotta be very careful of letting that success go to your head. I can't tell you how many times um, I've met successful people, millionaires, uh, billionaires, and one thing that they all have in common that I see is they they know how to control themselves. Whether they drink a lot or whether they smoke or whatever, they, you know, even in those myths, all those times you can kind of tell, say, hey, you know, this kind of person I am, you know, this is why I like, this is why I don't like. Uh, because if you don't do that, you'll find yourself losing, you know, your butt on investments, losing on your, your relationship with your marriage, with your kids. And, you know, I, well, Les Brown said his best, you know, money's not everything, but it's right up there with air. Uh, and I, I, I totally concur with that because at the end of the day, what, you know, yeah, you say, okay, you didn't announce money, but, you know, even monks, they have to pay bills and, you know, electric bills and, you know, water bills and things of that sort. So that's just a bare minimum and a place to lay your head, you know, where it is. Somewhere where you pay $300 a month for rent or a mortgage or $3,000 a month for rent or mortgage, whatever. 
So I would say to know your limits. And then the third perspective I would say in creating yourself is, what is it that you're leaving behind? Okay, what are you leaving for your generation, your kids' kids, or your children's children's children, you know, as the Bible says? Uh, what are you leaving for society? I mean, uh, I know some people who really don't necessarily care about that. And which, you know, that's, prerog that's the prerogative. I understand it wholeheartedly. Uh, but also I would think, you know, even if you were purely about money or purely about your success or about yourself, what is it that you believe in? Uh, are you, you know, let's say you, you work $20 million and, and you, 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 you're working and you hit that number and it's your goal. Do you squander it all? You know, in one day, you know, you know, you go buy, you know, I don't know, 20, but God, is there a million dollars each or something? I don't know. But what is it that you want to leave behind? Because that's going to be a part of one, you know, keeping yourself balanced, knowing your limits, being sober, and then, you know, two, being knowing yourself. Because I can tell you from firsthand that what I thought motivated me didn't motivate me. Because once I obtained it, it was like, okay, cool, great. I'm glad I got it. I'm glad I achieved it. Uh, but it's like, it was something else. I was like, hey, so now I've had to reinvent myself and dig deeper and see what I wanted to do with my life and you know what value I want to add. And I mean, to be honest with you, I love doing these uh, YouTube and videos. I love doing my podcast, uh, not my podcast, my blog posts. Uh, some people encourage me to do podcasts and uh, I might get down that road when, you know, once that time arrives. But for the most part, I just want to make sure that I'm adding value because it's some, it's some kid or older person who's looking to make, looking to make a change in their career, um, or, you know, where from the law standpoint, um, you know, somebody who's in law school who's, okay, this is kind of where I want to go, but I'm not quite sure. And I think oftentimes when you get a profession like a medical doctor, accountant, or uh, like your, your more traditional uh, careers, People have a tendency, I have to, you know, be this dentist, I have to be this doctor, and that's all about me. Well, you know, that same doctor, dentist, a lawyer, has to go to the church, and they have to get motivated. They have to deal with family. They have to deal with spouses. They have to deal with colleagues. They have to deal with, you know, law partners or business partners and things of that sort. So, and this podcast is for me, for me, it, it not only helps my viewers, my audience, my following, but it also helps me because I'm showing you guys my transition. Um, or as my growth, I guess, uh, into, you know, new ventures and new endeavors outside the law. I mean, I can't tell you how many times as a lawyer, I get a call, hey, can you donate to this? Or, hey, can you come speak to my my son's school? Or can you, you know, X, Y, and Z? But the mere fact, I'm just a lawyer. And so, you know, you ask yourself, okay, how am I to portray to some students or some youth as a lawyer, like, hey, anything is possible? Or, you know, read, don't do drugs, and that sort and you can't go in there you know, <laughs> citing cases, you know, you know, especially constitutional profit law cases, because you're losing, right? You know, they're six and seven or eight years old, but at the end of the day, you want to let kids know and people who are just really making a transition, very young, old, black, white, rich, or poor, that you know you can't make a transition. No matter how much you, you know, work to achieve something else, you don't be scared to re re uh, create yourself. So, you know, three perspectives that I provide is one, know thyself. To you know, know your limits. You know, you know, be sober. Uh, you know, and then three, you know, what's your generational legacy? What's your legacy? What do you want to leave to your kids or to your community? You know, your church or whatever. And so, you know, that's just my take on it. So, you guys have a blessed day. If you need anything? Call me. Uh, you got my number in the comment sections. You know, I'm on all the social media platforms. Uh, I might start hitting you guys with some TikTok videos, but. Um, I gotta let me you guys dust up, uh, dust off my uh, dancing shoes. So, you guys, we have blessed.